What I love hearing from you too is the love letter that you put out. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that love letter? Well, I've always just said that your estate plan is your ultimate love letter because if you put everything in place so that when you die or become disabled, your loved ones can just go about the business of grieving and remembering you and not having to deal with all the crud that comes along with administering an estate that has not been well planned. That is the ultimate love letter. It's not just the money you leave them or the stuff you leave them. It's the peace of mind that they're following your wishes. You've put everything in place. It's easy to follow. Everybody knows what they're doing and you just make it as seamless as possible for your loved ones in what would otherwise be a very time consuming, tedious, um, horrible situation in most cases. So yeah. that's the ultimate love letter. Plan, plan. So when people don't use that ultimate love letter, what are some of the things that they can look forward to if they haven't mm -hmm. used it? <laughs> well, first of all, if you if you've not done a will, let's just talk about the death for a moment and then we'll maybe talk about disability. But if you die without at least a will, the legislature has created a will for you for any asset that you own in your separate name at the time of your death. The legislature has created a will for you. It may not leave your assets to the people that you would want to receive your assets. And it certainly may not leave it to them in the manner in which you would want them to inherit it. It does not appoint the executor for you of your choice. It has a list of people, you know, a hierarchy of who would be chosen to be your executor or what we call a personal representative in North Carolina. Um, and that may or may not be the person you want to handle your things. Not only that, that executor would then have to post a bond money out of their own pocket that they have to post with the court to make sure they don't run off with your estate. So <laughs> it, it's tedious. It's very tedious. You have to go through a probate if you die with assets in your own name. And there are just a lot of steps that we could avoid if, if necessary, if things were set up properly. So, you know, you, you might encourage family fights. There's so many things that can go wrong if you don't take control and plan your own death or disability. And you know, what, what I want to tell people is that a lot of people don't want to plan because it's morbid, right? You're talking right. about if you're disabled or you're dead, who wants to talk about that? That's awful. <laughs> but what I like to say is you're, you're really taking control and it's, it's talking about how you maintain dignity and control when things out of your control happen to you, disability or death. How do you maintain control and have things go as seamlessly as possible whether it's making decisions for you when you're disabled or taking care of your estate and your loved ones when you're deceased. And it's, if, if people think of it that way, then I can get them to the table more easily back when I was a, an estate planning lawyer. And uh, you know, people think, well, if I do my estate plan, I'm going to die. And I think, no, Murphy's law says if you're prepared, nothing's going to happen to you. Right? <laughs> you prepare, yeah. You're going to get a hit by the bus, but let's prepare. And then you can, then you can go to sleep every night knowing it's all taken care of and you just get to hang out with your family and enjoy your family and friends and not worry about it anymore. That's right. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah. We have a question.